Atlanta, Georgia, the site for one of the most intriguing sports stories of the year 1977. Following three consecutive years in which the Atlanta Falcons had not won more than four games in a season, in 77, the pro football fans of Atlanta had reason to rejoice all season long. Every category of play showed improvement, and the defense improved so much that it forced its way into the NFL record book. The man who deserved much of the credit for this remarkable achievement was the Falcons' new head coach, Lehman Bennett, for it was he, more than anyone else, who created close encounters of a new kind. Lehman Bennett's first obstacle was the opening game against his former team, the Los Angeles Rams, who had embarrassed the Falcons 59 to nothing in their last meeting. Due to knee surgery, quarterback Steve Bartkowski was sidelined, and for the first half of the season, Scott Hunter was in command of the Atlanta offense. Against Los Angeles, the Falcons used a ball control offense which outgained the Rams by almost 100 yards. Hunter completed 10 of 17 passes, half of them to number 89 wide receiver Wallace Francis. While for the Rams, the much celebrated return of Joe Namath was ruined by a devastating Atlanta pass rush. The Falcons won 17 to 6 in a game which will live in the memory of Falcon fans. The victory was Atlanta's first in nine games against the Rams and was the Falcons' first season opening victory since 1973. But more than that, it was a game which established Lehman Bennett's Atlanta Falcons as a team to contend with. Week two found the Falcons in Washington where the defense was again outstanding. On offense, Scott Hunter enjoyed one of his best days as a pro, connecting on 16 of 33 passes and leading an offense which rolled up 341 total yards. Wide receiver Alfred Jenkins accounted for 152 yards by himself, but despite coming close, the Falcons were halted just short of victory number two. Back home against the New York Giants, the defense continued to pour on the pressure, forcing four turnovers and sacking two giant quarterbacks a total of nine times for 81 yards in losses. A touchdown catch by Alfred Jenkins capped a late 80-yard drive, which clinched the Falcons' second victory. In San Francisco, superior defense again did the job for the Falcons, who in four games had collected 19 sacks and had yielded only 19 total points. The game ball was awarded to cornerback Rollin Lawrence, who came up with the game's key interception and had two touchdowns canceled by penalties. Scott Hunter completed nine of 14 passes, including a deflection which Alfred Jenkins turned into the only scoring play of the game. Despite their best start ever, week five in Buffalo brought trouble for the Falcons, who witnessed some NFL history in the making as O.J. Simpson became only the second player ever to gain more than 10,000 yards in a career. The Falcons lost three to nothing, but were still tied for first as they headed for Chicago in a confrontation with the vastly improved Bears. The defense came through with five more turnovers, two of them interceptions by free safety Ray Easterling, 
while giving Walter Payton, the NFL's leading rusher, one of his worst days of the season. After six games, the Falcons were four and two, but as Coach Bennett stated prophetically, we can't continue to win with these low scores. In week seven against the always contending Vikings, the Falcons got an early lead with a bomb to back up tight end Greg McCrary, number 88. But then after four and a half games without giving up a touchdown, the defense begrudgingly yielded two to Fran Tarkenton. And the Vikings held on for a narrow victory. Week eight marked the return to the starting lineup of quarterback Steve Bartkowski, whose knee surgery and brace left him less nimble in the face of the ferocious San Francisco gold rush. The Falcon defense held the 49ers to just 10 points, and another Rollin Lawrence touchdown was nullified as the Falcons lost 10 to three and finally fell from first place in the NFC West. The target for the defense in week nine was Greg Landry of the Detroit Lions, a team the Falcons had never before defeated in nine tries. This time, Lehman's demons swarmed all over the Lions, forcing four turnovers, including two defensive touchdowns, one by middle linebacker Ralph Ortega, the other by left linebacker Robert Pennywell, number 59, which resulted in a sound 17-6 victory for the Falcons, who were now 5-4 after nine games. Week 10 in New Orleans saw the Falcons take an unusual 20-7 lead, as Steve Bartkowski found Alfred Jenkins for his third touchdown reception of the season, and Archie Manning was victimized by Falcon cornerback Rick Bias, number 38. Although the Falcons scored 20 points, it was not enough to offset the 21 they gave up, including a last-minute blitz beater to tight end Henry Childs. The Falcons had still given up only 83 points in 10 games. And in Tampa Bay, they made it 83 points in 11 games. The Falcons intercepted four passes and yielded a club record of only 78 total yards as they accomplished their second shutout of the season, 17 to nothing. Week 12 found Steve Bartkowski and the Falcons up against the AFC's toughest defense, that of the New England Patriots. And as might be expected when two of the NFL's defensive powers meet, the game was decided by turnovers, in this case by interceptions. Atlanta led 10 to nine with less than five minutes to play. But in another close encounter, the Patriots came through with just enough to squeeze out a victory. In Los Angeles for the season's next to last week, Steve Bartkowski enjoyed the best day of his injury-shortened season as he completed 15 of 28 passes for 238 yards and a long touchdown to Alfred Jenkins. Most of this, however, was an attempt to catch the Rams who won 23 to seven in the only Falcon defeat of the season, which wasn't as close as a single touchdown. Back home for the season's finale, the Falcons were anxious to square their season record at seven and seven, and to set a modern NFL record for fewest points allowed in a season. They accomplished both. In 14 games, the Falcons yielded only 129 points, four better than the previous record, and even the special teams joined in the defensive frolic.
The offense was cooking also, as number 48 fullback Woody Thompson churned for the season's longest touchdown run, while his running mate, Haskell Stanback, number 24, added 135 yards and two more touchdowns. Steve Barkowski threw two touchdown passes, one of them to promising rookie running back to Cedric McIntyre, number 41. The season's final touchdown went to wide receiver Billy Rickman, number 82. And Rickman and his friends knew how to celebrate the conclusion of a history-making season, which will live forever in the pages of the NFL record manual. When general manager Eddie LeBaron brought Lehman Bennett into the organization, the question was, who's he? Lehman Bennett answered that by earning NFC Coach of the Year honors. One of Coach Bennett's top priorities was to rebuild the offensive line. And to do so, he installed number one draft choice, Warren Bryant of Kentucky, at right offensive tackle. At right guard, Bennett placed the enthusiastic second round draft choice, R.C. Thielman of Arkansas. Anchoring the line was veteran center Jeff Van Note, who helped to lead the other young linemen like Brent Adams, Dave Scott, and Phil McKinley. With rookies Brian and Thielman now fixtures on the right side, the Falcons' offensive line has suddenly become the kind a coach can build around. For most of 1977, the running game featured number 24, halfback Haskell Stanback, and number 48, fullback Woody Thompson as the starters. With the expected return of former number one draft choice Bubba Bean, the Falcons should be well fixed at the running back positions, and some of the pressure should be off Haskell Stanback, the team's leading rusher for the season with 873 yards. Due to injuries, the quarterbacking was, of course, split between Scott Hunter and Steve Bartkowski, who has been forced to miss 18 full games in his three professional seasons. When Hunter is at the helm, the ball control passing game is featured, with short throws to sure-handed receivers like tight end Jim Mitchell, number 86. In the ball control attack, two of the leading receivers were number 89, Wallace Francis, and the all-purpose running back, Haskell Stanback, number 24. Number 84, Alfred Jenkins, was the team's leading receiver in every category. And it always seemed that the little three-year veteran from Morris Brown got the most possible from every play. Coach Bennett developed Falcon special teams, which were the envy of the entire league. He brought in number one place kicker Fred Steinford to shore up the shaky place kicking game and he instilled the kind of discipline and enthusiasm necessary to block nine kicks during the season. On the other end of the kicking game was number 22, Roland Burns. And there are few better at getting the maximum return from any punting situation. When it was the Falcons' turn to punt the ball, the man of the minute was number six, all-pro John James, who does wondrous things when he puts his right foot forward.
perfectly complementing the punting of John James were the punt coverage teams, the kamikaze kids who are the heart and soul of great special teams play. The Falcon defense, names unknown to much of the football world, but names representing defensive players who know the meaning of the word team. Not only did they give up the fewest points in the NFL, but they also led their conference in interceptions and pass defense and set a new team record for sacks of the quarterback. But Coach Bennett's first defensive commandment is stop the run and stop it, they did. Where once there were holes to run through, now Falcon defenders poured through. When the run has been stopped, the second commandment reads, get to the quarterback. Whether stopping the run or getting to the quarterback, the basic underlying philosophy remains the same. Swarm the opponent's point of attack with as many gang tacklers as possible. For the more defenders who meet at the ball, the better the chance of turning defense into offense. The foundation of any great defense must be found in the front line, and the Falcon front four provided everything that Coach Bennett called for. At the tackles were number 69, seven-year veteran Mike Lewis, and number 72, eight-year man Jim Bailey, both of whom were spelled by number one draft choice Wilson Fomwina. At the ends were three-year veteran Jeff Merrill, and the perennial all-pro 10-year man, Claude Humphrey, number 87. These are the men who stopped the run and then turned it loose on the quarterback. The primary quarterback chasers are always the defensive end. And this is where much of the pressure comes from, which results in a team record 42 sacks. Falcon linebackers were exceptional also despite the absence of one of the league's best, Fulton Kuykendall, number 54, who was injured in the season's fifth week. The Falcons blitzed often with young men like Ron McCartney, Dewey McLean, number 59, Robert Pennywell, and the reliable 10-year veteran Greg Brezina, number 50.
With the retirement of Tommy Nobis, the middle was patrolled for the first time by the third-year veteran from Florida, Ralph Ortega, number 55, who always seemed to be where the ball was. The Falcon safeties, Ray Easterling, number 32, and Ray Brown, number 34, played almost like an extra pair of punishing linebackers. At the cornerback positions, also there were hitters. Starting the season at the right corner was Frank Reed, but then a five foot nine inch fourth year man from Wayne State named Rick Bias took over the position and played it as if he had spent a lifetime there. At left cornerback was one of the principal reasons that the Falcons led the entire NFL in pass defense. Number 22, all-pro Rollin Lawrence, led the NFC with seven interceptions, while the Falcon defense collectively led the conference with 26. The Atlanta Falcons of 77 were typified by players like MVP Roland Lawrence, players who consistently made the big play. These are the players who played together and stayed together. And these are the men Coach Bennett will be building around as he constructs the Falcons of the future. But no matter what the future brings, there will always be a warm glow associated with the 1977 season Coach Lehman Bennett's first, the season of Close Encounters of a New Kind. <laughs>